Hello, this is the fourth video of the Unit 3 Solar Thermal Power Plant. In this unit, we will see mainly the concept related to the loop power and the foundation of a solar thermal power plant that are, that are required to, to build this, this installation. The main concept at the beginning is the, is the loop concept. What is a loop? A loop is a series of interconnected collectors. First, we, we have a module which is the responsible to absorb this solar radiation and the reflecting mirror must reflect this solar radiation into the observer, the observer tube and this observer tube must transform this solar radiation into thermal energy. However, these modules are grouped in collectors, more or less each collector has from 8 to 12 modules and again we have a loop that it is a series of interconnected collectors. It is called a loop because the HTF enters in, a, in a, an end and it goes out in the other end in, in a shape of a loop because both ends are more or less in the same position. Here we can see the SCE, which is really a module, and SCA, which is uh, a collector, that is a set of modules, more or less 8 to, to 12, and a loop, which is these two lines of collectors. We can see in this case that each loop has one collector, two collectors, three collectors, and finally four collectors. So more or less each collector is going to have four collectors uh, multiplied by 12 modules, so 48 modules. Here we can see an, an example. The HTF enters in this end and it goes out in this end. Along this journey has gained more or less 100 degrees of temperature uh, the temperature at the beginning is more or less 293 degrees and at the end is 393 degrees. In following units we will see that this temperature is the limit because of cracking degradation reasons and, and other reasons. And here we can see the auxiliary heater which is very useful to heat to support enough energy to the HTF when there is a lack of solar radiation. Now to understand perfectly the loop power concept, first we must overview other terms, that is specific heat capacity, heat capacity, enthalpy, specific enthalpy, this, the difference of enthalpy and finally the loop power. First of all, we must understand specific heat capacity. A specific heat capacity is the amount of energy which must be supported into a, a kilogram of substance to rise its temperature in, in one degree. For example, we have a, a kilogram of rice and it's going to have a, a specific heat capacity that, that determines the, the amount of heat to be supplied to this, this kilogram of rice to elevate this, this temp this, its temperature in one degree. On the other hand, we have that, and this is for one kilogram. On the other hand, we have heat capacity, not a specific heat capacity, and this is the total amount of heat that must be supplied to the total substance. For example, if, if a substance has a mass of nine kilograms, not uh, only one kilogram, it's going to be defined at heat capacity and not a specific heat capacity. The formula of the heat capacity is the heat absorbed or sent by a thermodynamic system divided by the difference of temperature, or what is the same is equal to a specific heat capacity multiplied by the mass substance. On the other hand, we must understand what is enthalpy. Enthalpy really is a, is a measurement of the energy of a thermodynamic system and it, really it is the thermodynamic 
quantity equivalent to the total heat contained in a system. And it is equal to the internal energy plus the, the product of the pressure per the volume of, the, of a fluid. In, in this case, in the HTF pressure and the HTF volume. The, um, uh, for our purposes, we, we can define the difference of enthalpy as the, as the heat absorbed or sent by the thermodynamic system. So really, this heat is equal to the difference of enthalpy, not really the specific enthalpy. Because a specific enthalpy is the same that a specific heat capacity is the enthalpy divided by the mass of the substance. So is the total heat contained in just one kilogram of substance. Finally, we must define what is loop power. Loop power is the, is the power produced by a loop and it's the result of multiplying the flow which is being driven through the, the loop multiplied by the difference of a specific enthalpy, that is joules divided by kilograms. Here we can see the, this formula. The main features that we must know about a, a loop are the number of solar collector assemblies, that is HCA. More or less each loop has from uh, uh, 4 to 8 uh, collectors. The number of solar collector element, that is the modules, each collector has more or less from 8 to 12 modules. If we have got for collector, each one is going to have 12 modules. So each loop is going to have 48 modules. On the other hand, if uh, our solar thermal power plant has, um, each loop has eight collectors, each collector is going to have, per, per installation requirements, eight modules. So each loop is going to have 64 modules the inlet and outlet temp temperatures, that is 293 and 393. These temperatures will be discussed in the unit 5.1, uh, the maximum flow, the inlet pressure and outlet pressure. We must understand that drive pumps are located at the beginning of the solar field because the, um, these drive pumps must support enough pressure to, to the HTF because HTF is going to lose some pressure because of the pipes and, and other systems. This concept will be seen in, in following units, in especial in the unit 5.4, the pumping system. Now we, we must define what is the foundation. The foundation is the surface when, uh, where the solar field is going to be located and to make a correct foundation for the module not only must um, we must take into account the materials but also we must take into account the space between lines the lamp preparation internal roads barrier system characterization of the ground and finally the, the foundation the foundation process the space between lines is a very very important parameter because it's going to determine the distance uh, from one uh, from one loop to other loop. We must understand that the parabolic traps are very very big, and if we don't take into account this 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 height of a parabolic trap, they are going to cast some shadow on other parabolic trap. So the the direct normal irradiance and in general the solar radiation which is absorbed by the reflecting mirror is going to be lower. So the, we must define the utilization ratio. This, this parameter is the, is the ratio uh, of, the, of the surface related to the production of electrical energy in a solar thermal power plant divided by the, the total surface of this plant. And for a PTCSP plant, that is parabolic trough concentrated solar power plant, this, this parameter is more or less 40%. 40%. So for each megawatt, more or less 12 
thousand square meters are required. The main factor which are affected by this, this parameter, this space between lines, are the total available space, that is, how much space we are going to have uh, to produce electrical energy, the inclination of the land, in especially in the north-south line, because as we know, the, the main orientation system is east-west, so the, the loops are going to be in the north-south line, the shadows, because we don't want any shadows in, in other parabolic traps to improve our performance. And finally, the space for installation and maintenance, because each module is going to be maintained to, to clean the, the dirty because of the dust particles and, and beards. So common values in, uh, are in the range of 16 to 18 meters, although the most common value is 16 meters. Here we can see an example that from this loop to this loop, the space between lines is more or less 16 meters. Now we must define what are the main factors to understand land preparation. There are some concepts to take into account, and it is type of land, uh, mainly the, the environment, the, the place where the PTCS plan is located. For example, it's not the same to, to build um, a PTCSP plan in, in Spain or the United States because the, because the weather is not going to be the same. The requirement to, to improve the surface is, is required to, to build a drainage system because, because of the event of heavy rains and, and internal channels in, in the solar field to absorb this water. And the inclination, uh, it's, it's required, it's convenient that the solar field has an inclination in the north-south line. And the recommended values are from uh, 0.72 to 2.5%. With, with an inclination higher than 2.5%, we are going to have some disadvantages. For example, each pillar uh, must be reinforced in, in its vertical position. The height difference throughout the solar field is going to require a, uh, a, very, a very big land movement and the, and the price and the cost is going to be much, much higher. And finally, the height difference between the highest point and the expansion tank is going to be excessive. So this uh, higher inclination than 2.5% is, is not good. Avenue, 500 years. In some cases, it's necessary to calculate it because, uh, because of the heavy rains and thanks to the drain drainage system, we are going to build a dam and a channel perimeter to absorb this water and contain the, the, the rainwater in a, in a channel. The underground systems, which are, very, which are going to be very useful to communicate the, the power block and the solar field, that is, electrical systems, wiring of control between LOC, that is, local controller of collectors, and FSC, general control of the solar field, which are located in the power block. And finally, the land network, which are the electrical system in the solar field. The last parameter in land preparation is, um, is the, the, the number of sensors to monitor the water level and groundwater circulation. And we must understand two concepts, the zone of sa saturation and water, water table or water level. The zone of saturation is the place where the pores and fractures of the ground are saturated with, with water. And on the other hand, we have water table or water level, what is the same, and it is the, the part, the the, is the upper surface of the zone of saturation which is in contact with the atmosphere. So the both pressure, the, the atmosphere, and the water table pressure is going to be the same. Here we can see the water level because it is in contact with the atmosphere. So both pressure is going to be one bar. 
another concept that must be understood is internal roads because of the models must be maintained because of the dust particles and and some dirty and fracture for example and other problems the these models must be maintained with with maintenance vehicles and, and cleaning vehicles so we we must have some internal roads the most used shape for a solar thermal power plant in the solar field is the H shape where we have here the the loops here are the loops and the sub fields and here is the power block so the the maintenance vehicles and the cleaning vehicles to to clean the mirrors in the, for the models must circulate here Now we must define what is the varied system. Uh, the, the system uh, must communicate the power block with the electrical system in the solar thermal power plant. And these, uh, the both systems, are communicated by some wires. To avoid crossing these, these wires must be covered with concrete. So these wires must be covered with concrete here. Now we must define the, the main features for the ground. The permissible ground tension is the maximum load with a stood by the land. So if we have, for example, a surface and we apply a tension higher than the maximum permissible, the, the land is going to crash. And the common value is 2 kilograms divided by a square centimeter. On the other hand, we have ballast ratio. Ballast ratio is a constant spring from the ground. If we apply a, a load higher than the maximum permissible tension, it's not going to crash in, in this moment, but it's going to move down the, the, the floor, the surface. For example, the, uh, the, the units are kilogram divided by a square centimeter divided by centimeter because it's the load for a, a given length. The calculation of friction resistance, although it's calculated only when the, when the pilot, the, 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 the structure of the parabolic trough and the length are not, are not granular, other important parameter is the resistivity. Resistivity is the electrical parameter which, is, which quantifies how strongly a given material opposes the flow current. That is, we, we have a, a material and if it has a, a high resistivity, the, the, the current is going, to, is going to be a very, very low parameter. This formula is, is the resistivity is equal to resistance of the material, and it, it is a given data, multiplied by the cross-sectional area. That is, if we have got, for example, a, a wire, and, and this wire is, is a circle, the, the, the cross-sectional area is a, is a circle, we must calculate this area, and divide it by the length of this wire. And finally, the field aggressiveness, because there are very cor corrosive areas that require special materials. As we saw in previous picture, we, we know that foundation is the surface where the solar field is going to be located and is going to support, the, is going to withstand the, the weight of the collectors and also is going to fix them to the ground. We must understand that parabolic trough um, cannot be in the surface uh, without fixing them to the ground because there are, there are some wind load and if this wind load is enough high, the, the, the parabolic trough can be crushed. The foundations are made, are, are elaborated based on the dimension and structural assemblies and structural characteristics. For example, the weight of the module and the type of the terrain and wind loads.
depending on the previous picture, that is the dimensional feature, the weight of the module, the type or the type of the terrain, the following supporting pylons uh, can be observed. The strip footing, single pile and double pile. Here we can see single pile, which are going to fix this loop. Uh, here we can see a double pipe, which are the most used uh, at the end of each collector. And we have the steel. The steel really is the hole when, where the, the different piles are located. For example, um, it, it depends on the um, on the wind loads mainly, and, and it go, it's going to depend on the wind loads. For example, in the United States, the wind loads are going to be higher in general than in Spain. So this, the, the depth of the, of the steel is going to be bigger. The common values are from 4 meters to 8 meters, and the diameter of the steel is more or less uh, 70 centimeters. Here we can see an example of the steel. Here we can see the final process of the foundation. Here in the first picture we can see the steel when there, are, there is nothing. And here we are locating the, the iron elements. And finally we have here the, the iron bars where the piles are going to be fixed. To finish this element of this unit, we must understand what is Groundworks. Groundworks is the set of operation which modifies the leveling, the alignment and the dimensions of the solar field in a PT CSP plant. It has a significant cost because it represents the, the set of operation which is going to, to determine the, the surface, the, 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 the concrete, the, the alignment of the loops and the different varied systems, so it's very, very important. Alignment and, and leveling of towers of, of suggestion is the most important issue in Groundworks because it's going to determine the, the, main, the main element to fix the parabolic trap to the surface. And we must understand that this is a very, very important parameter because a bad execution is going to involve low optical performance, that is, uh, a very very low solar energy is going to be reflected into a sub absorber tube so the PTCSP plan overall performance is going to be lower too. Problems in monitoring that is in control system and, and solar tracking system. Problems on bearing uh, which is going to, to help uh, in the movement of this parabolic trough and the fracture of mirrors and tubes. So in general, the overall performance of our plan is going to be decreased. Here we can see an example of pylons, piles on, on the surface where the solar field is going to be located. And the operators in the solar field must ensure with topographic techniques the our requirements for the PT CSP plan. For example, the inclination in the north-south line, the, 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 the sun alignment, etc. And finally, we can see here uh, an example. Here is the loop. Each collector has a, a length of 150 meters. Each collector has 12 SCE. So we, we know uh, because of previous pictures that if our loop has, uh, if each collector has 12 modules, the loop is going to have four collectors. And here we can verify this concept. One, two, three, and four collectors. And here we can see some drive pylons located here between uh, both collectors and end pylon. And some middle pylons which are going to to join the different modules. To finish, uh, we must understand that the, um, the outer loops must be reinforced because the inner loops in the solar field are, are reinforced because of the, the, other, the, the other loops. The, they are near the power block 
and the other loops are going to reinforce them. However, the, the, uh, the outer loops are not reinforced be because they, they are at the perimeter. So the, the material of uh, their foundation um, and the, their piles mu must be higher in quality to ensure that the overall performance of our solar field must be the optimum. So we have successfully finished the loops study in a PT CSP plant.